Hi, my name is Daniel Sokol. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and I wanted to spend a little time today talking about punishments with young children. Um, specifically uh, as parents, uh, how frustration can take over and then the punishments don't really help the behavior they're trying to resolve. Now, uh, the main thing I'm going to be talking about is the importance of avoiding what I call compounding punishment. Now, compounding punishment is when you are getting frustrated with a kid and uh, you tell them to stop doing what they're doing or they will get uh, this consequence. So if a kid's not cleaning up, you're going to lose that toy or those toys are going to be taken away for a while if you don't clean up. So let's say the kid doesn't clean up and the parent starts to get frustrated, starts to escalate, and it becomes, now you've lost this, and the kid's still not participating, or maybe now throwing a tantrum, and the parent says, now you're not getting this, and it continues and magnifies and gets worse and worse, and the parent goes, now you're not getting this, 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 this. So then you get to a point where the parent's escalated, frustrated, exhausted, kid's probably throwing a tantrum, and at this point the kid has nothing to lose, and feels like everything's already been taken away and falls apart at the seams. Now with really young kids, you'd probably see the tantrums. As kids get older and compounded punishment is used, you'll probably see a kid start to get really defiant or aggressive or kind of hurtful and mean. Um, and so the point of avoiding compounding punishments is to avoid this ultimate level of exhaustion felt on both sides. Now, as a parent, it is very difficult to stay calm when you're frustrated, to stay calm when kids aren't listening, and it's exhausting. Um, but the key piece of advice in regards to avoiding compounding punishment and making consequences uh, being uh, taken in uh, and to allow these moments that can get so exhausting in a family to be a little more peaceful and have a little bit more compliance or a lot more compliance on the kid's end are that the patient is straightforward and direct, has one consequence, and that's that, um, and that if there's an act of non-compliance, it's not a battle to enforce the compliance, but that the non-compliance existed, the consequence is given, and that's that. But to add punishment onto punishment, and then onto punishment, it's a losing battle for both sides. And so uh, one of my key pieces of advice I give parents that I work with is avoid this at all costs um, and do whatever it takes to remove yourself to feel calm, to have dialogue so you don't feel like you're going to get to a point where it's just building on top of more punishment all the time. Because that's when you get stuck in these cycles of utter exhaustion and it feels like a losing game and uh, then the kids feel like they've got nothing to lose and then the negative behaviors often increase. Um, I hope this video was helpful, uh, kind of just a short video to understand punishment, compounding behavior, and the outcomes of it. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. My website is www.danielsokol.com. If you're a patient uh, and you're interested in becoming a patient of mine uh, or uh, you're looking for a presentation, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. The contact form on my website is a great way to reach me. I hope you have a great day and I hope this was helpful. Take care.